Let's create a YAML for a replica set and see how it works. So I'm going to save the contents of uh, So I save this YAML to replicaset.yaml file. And what I'll do is I'll just make sure that there's nothing running because we deleted the pod. And I'll do the same thing that we did with the pods. I'm gonna run, uh, I'm gonna run kubectl apply-f to uh, pass in the file name. And we're gonna create a replica set called hello. Now, in order to view the replica set that we created, we can use kubectl, the verb is get, and the name of the resource in this case is replica set. So this command will show the name of the replica and the number of the desired instances, current instances or replicas that are running and the number of replicas that are ready as well as the uh, age of the resource. So we can also look at the pause and in our case, because we have uh, uh, we've desired to have five replicas of the pods running, we will see five pods running. Another way for uh, listing resources is to use the label. So we've set the label uh, for our pods to app.kubernetes.io slash name, we set it to hello. So we could use kubectl get pod and a flag called dash L for label equal app.kubernetes.io slash name. Colon. So this will list all the pods that have this label. It's equal hello. Uh, this will list all the pods that have this, uh, this uh, name label set, which in our case is R5 pods. We have also mentioned the uh, owner reference field the field that actually identifies which replica set owns the pod. So let's look at that one as well. I'm just gonna pick this first pod. It doesn't matter uh, if I would pick a different one. So I'll, I'll say kubectl get pods, name of the pod, and then I'll say, I want to get the YAML representation of this pod. So this will give me the full YAML of this pod. But then I'm also gonna grab for just owner reference. And you'll notice under owner references down here, the kind is set to replica set and the name of the replica set is set to hello. So this is the replica set that we created and this is the replica set that uh, owns our pods. Now, I don't know if you noticed that previously I used kubectl get pods, but you can also use kubectl get po, which is a short name for the pods, uh, but it will return you the same value. Similar goes for other resources such as services, you can use SVC, or for deployments or deployment, you can use deploy, for example. Now let's do kubectl get pods again. Now, previously, when we created a single pod, the name of that pod was hello-pod. Now, in this case, because replica set is creating the pods for us, uh, what's gonna happen is that the pods will be named, they will use the replica set name, which in our case is hello, and then a semi-random string after, uh, after the replica set node uh, uh, name uh, to uh, name the pods. So if I try to delete one of the pods, so I'm gonna use just gonna delete this first one. So I'll sell kubectl delete pod and I paste the, uh, paste the name of the pod. So let's delete this one. So let's see what happens. If we would have a single pod like we had before, that pod would be gone and it wouldn't come. But this time I cancel out of delete because I don't know why is it taking so long uh, to delete the resources. So I'll do, I'll list the pods again. And you'll notice that there's six pods right now. One is being terminated. So that's the one that we've deleted or I've deleted. And this is the new pod that, what, that was automatically created by the replica set. So let's try something different now. 
I will manually create a pod that has the exact same label or the label that matches the replica set selector label. So the app.kubernetes.io slash name will equal to hello. So let's create a file called straypod.yaml. And it's just a simple pod. I, I, I don't think it really matters what it is down here in the containers. The thing that matters for the replica set at least is the labels portion here. So these are the same labels that the replica set is trying to match on. So let's see what happens if we say kubectl apply dash f stray pod dot yaml. So the straight pod got created. Well, at least uh, that's what Kubernetes is telling us. So let's say kubectl get pods and see what's happening. You'll notice that the stray pod is in the terminating status. So there's still five pods running, five hello pods from the replica set running. However, the stray pod that we just deployed is in the terminating state. So what happened? So remember, replica set is making sure that there's only five pods that match this label created at any time, created and running at any time. So when we manually created the stray pod, the replica set took that pod as its own. So the manually created pod did not have the owner set. Now, once the replica set took over the management of this pod, the number of replicas actually went to six and not five as it stated in the number of replicas in the replica set. Therefore, the replica set did what it's supposed to do and it deleted the new pod just to maintain the desired state of five replicas. Now with the five pods running from this replica set, uh, let's see if we can do zero downtown deployments only using the replica sets. Now, spoiler alert, it cannot be done, at least not in a zero downtime manner. So let's see why this cannot happen, uh, just to better understand the, the way replica sets work, as well as the motivation for the next resource that we'll talk about, which is uh, Kubernetes deployment. So let's say we want to change the Docker image that's used in our uh, in the pods that are created by the original replica set. This is BusyBox. Uh, let's say we want to change this uh, image to BusyBox 1.31.1. So what we could do is we could use uh, kubectl edit rs, which is short for replica set, and then hello. And what this is going to do is it will open the YAML definition of this replica set in, a brow uh, in an editor. And down here, let's say we go, we'll go here and we say, we don't want BusyBox image, we want BusyBox 1.31.1. Okay, so let's save this and see what happens. So Kubernetes response saying that the replica set was edited, but nothing will happen. So let's look at the pods, zero restarts, Pods were not, respar not restarted. They're all the same age, meaning uh, the same set of pods uh, that started when we created the replica set. Uh, but let's look at one of the images, for example, in this first pod. So let's do kubectl describe. So describe is another command that you can use to get even more details about the resource. So we're gonna describe this pod and let's also grab for image so we don't, actually let's, Let's show how the full describe looks like. So this is what you get when you describe a resource in Kubernetes. So you get way more details. Uh, and it's just a friendly, uh, more friendly version of uh, the YAML file that you would get. Okay, so let's do, I'm just gonna clear the screen, like this, and we'll just grab for the image. Now remember, we, uh, we did update the image from BusyBox to BusyBox 131.1. However, there's nothing has changed, right? The pods were not touched uh, and they're still running the old version of the image. So let's see what happens if I delete this pod. So I'll say kubectl, delete pod, and I'll paste in the name of the pod. So we know uh, that the replica set will do whatever the replica set does best. And that is to maintain the number of replicas, the desired number of replicas. So we're gonna delete one pod, 
So uh, the replicas, the number of actual replicas will go down to five. And then replica set will recreate uh, a new pod. So let's delete this one. I'll cancel out and we will just wait for the new pod to come up. So the pod is being terminated, but you'll notice down here, there's another one that was already started. So let's look at the image that's being used by this pod. So I'll do kubectl scribe pod, and then we'll grab for image just like we did before. Now this time, the version or the image name used is the actual image name uh, that we wanted. Uh, the problem here is that we could go and delete all of these pods. Uh, and then when replica said would restart them, we would actually get the new versions with the new image version. However, this is not really uh, zero downtown deployments because you might, uh, you might just kill all the pods and then you'll have to wait for the new pods to come up. Uh, however, there is another resource in Kubernetes that can be used to manage replica sets. So we have replica sets that are managing pods, but we also have deployments that are managing replica sets. And these deployments allow us to update pods in the controlled manner. So when we change the image name, uh, what can happen with the deployment is deployment can automatically delete one of the old pods and bring up one of the new pods uh, that uses the new uh, Docker image name in our case. And it's going to do this in a controlled, no zero, zero downtime manner. So let's see how we can delete the replica set before we continue. So we'll say kubectl delete rs for replica set hello uh, so deleted the replica set and then if we do kubectl get pods you'll see that all the pods uh, will be terminated so once uh, the replica set will terminate all the pods they will be gone and so is the replica set is gone as well 